like news. I just got some blues, times it too, so my god. What up, world? Welcome to Toast and Puff. I am your host, Insane, M-A-I-N, and I am in the building. If you watching this show and you want to be a part of us, you want to share some music, poets, rap singing, or you got a business you just trying to promote and need some promotion, man, you might want to holler at us over here at toastandpuff at gmail.com. Today we got a very, very special guest in the building. We got a Memphis queen in the building. First lady of Toast and Puff, man. The one and the only internet sensation, Nave. Hey, thank How you, you for doing, Nave? I'm doing good. How it's are you? I'm good, man. I'm just good. It's a pleasure having you on this show. Now let's get just jump right into it, though, man. What started your rap journey? I've been doing music for like so long, since I was little. Yeah. I would take my own phone and upload videos on YouTube of just like me thinking I'm rapping. I would do it so much. If you was to search up her name right now, all of those videos are still there and it's so embarrassing because people do that. My first ever music name that I came up with was Chunky on the Beat Star. Beat Star Y. I made no <laughs> beats at all, but it's always been there because like I love music. I've always been passionate about it. Man, that's good though. That sounds like it. Ever since a youth. <laughs> what style of music do you prefer making? When it comes to my music, yeah. it is not like one thing. Can nobody just think of a morning bay and think of one music style? Because I do so many different genres. Mm -hmm. I can't really just put myself in a box and stick to one thing because there's so many things to try. And I want to say I've done this and I've done that. Like I want to be around any crowd and have fan bases in every single genre of music there is because like, why not? Be a very experimental person. Yeah. <laughs> what was the first song you ever wrote, if you can remember, and how did it turn out? The first song I've ever written myself did not turn out. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out how you would expect a child writing a song would. I was heavily influenced by Cardi B. Mm -hmm. I really just loved her music. I liked her outfits and stuff. Her song that she made called Money, mm -hmm. I remixed it. That was the first song I ever wrote myself and tried to record myself and it was a hot mess. I basically stole her <laughs> song, just like changed a few words, but we did it. I'm happy I did it because like now I can say I did that and I'm better now. Yeah, people are better now. I already know. What singles you got doing the best right now? For me currently, the best song that I have like doing really big numbers is a diss that I did on a girl. Yeah. For stealing $45 from me. 45 In the comments, it was like, I didn't even take the song seriously. I made the song like, oh, you stole $45. Like, I'm finna make a joke, because, like, why are you stealing? I posted it on TikTok, and it ended up doing big numbers. I did not expect it to. It get, got half a million on TikTok, and it's just <clears> one <throat> video. And I was like, okay, let me see what I can do with this. I kept posting more videos, got half a million again, and just kept growing. And once I actually dropped the song, it generated, like, 70,000 streams just on SoundCloud itself, not even including like all the other platforms. So I was really proud of myself for that. Just from a song I didn't even take seriously. I recorded it in 10 minutes, if that. Mm, 10 minutes and, and it blew up like that. <laughs> That's pretty good though. Which rapper, song, or situation influenced you to create music? Really? Just like. I've always lived in a music listening household. Like, we're clean enough, it's music playing. People mad, it's music playing, it's always music around me. So like, as I'm growing up, I'm like, okay, I see everybody use music as like a coping mechanism. So it's just like, okay, I want to be able to heal people when they're upset. I want them to play my music while they're cleaning up, while they're doing this. And as I started to like, get older and just actually take it seriously, I started to like, get attention towards the underground scene. Mm -hmm. So right now, I'm heavily influenced by artists like, Rich Amiri, Ken Carson, and stuff like that. I like artists like that as of right now. But growing up, like starting my career, it wasn't really a person. It was just like seeing music around me every day. Oh, yeah. That's what's up? <laughs> you got any concerts or shows, anything coming up soon? I actually do, and I'm really excited about these because, like, I have a show in Miami in December, and that has all the artists, like some of the artists I just named, the Rich Amiri, and all the people, like, it's a big show, and I'm really excited about it because I've never performed in front of a big group of people that actually wanted me to be there. Yeah. They asked me to come on, and it's like, ah, people actually care to see me. I'm really excited about that. Well, I'm excited for you. That's good. <laughs> Who was a rapper that you would like to get a feature from or go on a tour with? Currently, as of right now, yeah. I really, 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 really want a feature from Laser Dam 700. He's not really known here, but like... 
in the music world that I'm in, he's like the ideal person to have a feature with for me right now. I really want that feature. In the future, hopefully I can work with some of the bigger artists like that I'm compared to, like BK The Rule. I hate the comparisons. I hope that does not affect working together in the future, but I would really want to work with her also. Well, that was good. That was good. I hope it happened, though. And right now, we're going to go into a commercial break. We're going to go into your song called Geek. We back, Toast and Puff. We just got through bumping that motherfucking geek. That motherfucker nice, man. What the fuck was geek? When I recorded that song, I was just like, that was in the middle of me having like a break from recording music. That was the first song I recorded after taking like a week break. Yeah. So you know, like that first song is not always like, eh. mm -hmm. it's give or take, but that one gave. And I was like, okay, yeah, I was listening to Osama song before I recorded that song. Yeah. So it was like heavily influenced by his demeanor. I can say. So that's where that came from. Yep. That's what's up, though. Any shows, arena, or war shows you would want to be a part of in the future? As of right now, like, thinking where I want to be in the next five or six years, i say, there's not, like, really a big, big thing I want to see myself in, like, Grammys and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, as of right now, that's not even what I want for myself. I always want, like, the best. But I currently want to grow my scene in the underground a lot more to just like make sure I always have a consistent fan base because like I feel like having a goal for mainstream is good for some people mm -hmm. but for the audience that I want to grab first it's just not ideal for me right now yeah I feel you on that what you um what what, is, what does it take to get you in the songwriting mood <laughs> anything to mess up my mood is a songwriting mood I could be having the best day Somebody get my order wrong, it's time to record a song. I could be having a great day. I'm like, oh, okay, I need to put this energy somewhere. Like, I feel like I record a song, at least one song, every single day. Mm -hmm. So just for me to record a song, I just need to have motivation of, oh, it's the next day. It's time to record a song because I'm trying to perfect my craft every single day. That's good. That's good. I like that. What goals are you trying to achieve in your music career? My goals are just to be able to say, people listen to me. Like, I want to be able to walk into a room and people know who I am because they know my music. Not even if, like, it's a hundred people. I just want to have, like, people knowing me. That's my goal, to leave an impact. Not even a very, like, influential thing like Beyonce. I don't care to be like that. But as long as there's some sort of impact, I'm mm -hmm. cool with it. Yeah, that's what it is. What do it feel like to be a Memphis artist? People ask me that, like, at my school and stuff, like, how does it feel to be there? Y'all, I promise, I am the most humble and grateful person in this world because I sometimes don't even give myself credit for the stuff I have accomplished. It doesn't even feel, I won't say it doesn't even feel like it's happening, but when I first hit the million, everybody's so excited for me. They're like, ah, you just did this. And I'm like, yeah. When I first signed my record deal, mm -hmm. I bought a car. I'm just in the car like, yeah, I got a car. And I was like, you know, I said, I'm like, I'm very excited. It just feels like I knew it was going to happen for me. And I expected it to. So now I'm just like, okay, I did that. It's not like, oh, gee, I'm so excited because, like, I never knew. Like, I know everything that's coming for me, I've prayed for it. It's meant for me. So you are signed? Yeah, currently. Yeah, that's what's up, man. How do you feel about the state of music right now? I feel like... It should be so much different because nobody, I'm not going to say nobody, a lot of people in the music industry right now, mm -hmm. they're not original. Everybody's backpacking off of somebody else, yeah. trying to like, oh, they blew up doing this, so I'm going to just do this a little bit and do this. Like, nobody's original. I just want to see some original ideas. And when it is original ideas, the person that's doing it is looked down on so bad because, like, you're being different, da-da-da-da-this. That's why I'm like... 
appreciative for the small music scene I have in Memphis right now because the music I make isn't really Gorilla type beat or Sexy Red and stuff like that. It's like what I listen to is me, and I'm really happy for what I have here. I feel like it should be more versatile, most definitely. Yeah. What artists in the city you feel like making the most noise right now to you? To me in Memphis, I'd say. I've been trying to open my ears to other music just because, like, I do every genre, so I want to hear every genre also. I've been listening to Trey Loaded a lot. I like his music. I feel like I can relate to it a little bit, like his flow. He kind of gave me an NLE Chopper style before, like, he started varying off into other things, but I really yeah. like him right now. Yeah. Yeah, people want to know, though. Is getting a record deal even worth it these days? Honestly, I could say, in my case, no. But that could be different for many different reasons and many different people. According to, like, the deal you sign, yeah. it's all about, like, the numbers they're throwing at you and the commitment you're giving up. Like, for me, it's not really that bad. Like, I'm in a good situation right now with myself, so I'm happy that I did it. But, like, in the future, I definitely feel like being solo is for the best if you know how to be solo. Like, if you know how to collect all your royalties from every work, every place there is to collect from, you know how to get your promotion, then signing is really not something you need, unless you just need a lot of money backing you up right then and there. Yeah, that's good. That's what's up, though. Man, right now, we're going to go into a break right now. We're going to take this break. We're going to go into this song. And we back, Toast and Puff. This song, Five Minutes, that motherfucking nice, Lavelle. Thank you. What, what, what influenced Five Minutes? In that song, I was on a stream with my friend Jakester. We were doing a song wars. I was hosting it at first because, like, I was trying to expand. But it was boring, hosting. Like, I just hate sitting there listening to other people. I was like, y'all, let me hop in this. I was trying to record FL when I worked. Mm. By the time it started working, I had five minutes left to send that song in and record it. I recorded this song in five minutes. That's why I named it. It. And it ended up being a really good song that people was liking. And I was like, okay, cool. That's where they came from. Man, she telling me, that's why I'm writing with that pen, getting it done in five minutes flat. Don't play with it <laughs> in the bay. Man, now, today we got to go do this. This is the QA, the most intriguing, but it's the coolest part of the show. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. I didn't write this. <laughs> Let's go. Question number one Would you tell your dad if your mom was cheating on him? In my head, my mom is the most important parent. So if mama was cheating, your secret's safe with me. I'm not snitching. Now, other way around, daddy getting told on. But that way, no, I'm not snitching on my mom. Yeah, that's, that's, you about right, though. You, you know what I'm saying? Would you tell your dad if your mom was cheating on him? Man, I, I'm trying to see. I, I, I might, I might not, I might not. I, can, I don't think I'd tell my dad because I'm cheating. I um, snitched on my mom to my dad, and I got the worst ass whooping of my life. So. I'm not going through that shit again. <laughs> so that's a no. <laughs> Question two. If your parents put you out and you got a thousand dollars, what would you do? With that thousand dollars, I am um, see, am I reading it? My mama don't need to put me out. And I got a thousand dollars. I know that lady whole information. I will be getting an apartment where she live at. Under that name of hers, with that thousand dollars, I'm gonna be straight. I'm gonna be back in that house before it's time to pay rent again, so I ain't gotta worry about all that. We just stop thinking about for now, because like, why would you do that? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Well, yeah, I'm gonna tell you one thing. It's, I ain't got no answer for that. I like the way she put it, but I'm telling you, you better not put Nevaeh out. You put Nevaeh's ass out, your ass is in trouble, mom. <laughs> Question number three: If your friend area stinks. 
And you in public, do you tell her? Yes, I tell him. I'm going to be, like, as cool about it as possible. But, like, if you call myself, if I'm your friend and you're my friend, if you think, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. And I expect the same thing. People have bad days. I'm yeah. not going to walk around down the street having my friends think that somebody else have to tell you then your feelings going to be hurt. Yeah. So I'm going to let you know. Dude, so don't even want to be my friend if you got problems and you're scared for people to be honest because I'm going to be honest yeah. all the time. So like, I'm gonna do the same. And then if your shit's stinking and we in motherfucking public, if it's killing me, I know it's killing me. But I'm if, it's, if it's killing me, it's bothering other people too. So I'm, 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 I'm gonna have to address this shit. Hey, definitely. We're gonna have to do something about this. Yep, I'm gonna tell you. We're gonna go to this next question. <laughs> next question. My cousin lying like she's still in cottage and living in her car. You think she should go back home? Cousin, what you doing? Yeah. Oh, um, yes. I feel like you ain't got to please nobody that bad to be living in your car lying like you living a life in college. Thanks, Cousin, you thanks. need to come home. You need to come home because, like, you be doing so much better. Go back with your parents. Get back on your feet because what you living in a car for? Like, yeah, I just okay. feel like that's a no on many aspects. Man, I'm for real. I like that. I like Neve. Neve think like me, goddamn it. She <laughs> we think alike, so she making my job very easy today, goddamn it. <laughs> but cuz if you living in the car, get, out the car. get your ass out that motherfucking car, kick your own self in the ass and take your ass back home and tell mama I'm sorry, goddamn it. Question <laughs> next question. My girlfriend take her mom car to come and see me. How do I convince her to stop? Well, you, we gonna reverse it. We don't gotta reverse it. Right. Um, I'm not. Because, like, you wanna see me, come see me. I wanna see you. Because if I'm not seeing you, then you're not my girlfriend. You're not my boyfriend. You're not nothing. So you better be finding some type of transportation to get to me or there is no me and you. Like, what? That sounds like a woman. I, you cannot go wrong with that, man. Keep continuing stealing that goddamn you car to make this motherfucking relationship work. You don't get that car, or you don't get your ass on the bus, this relationship is going yeah, up in go motherfucking work. smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Last question of the day. My friend, boyfriend, cheating on her. What's a good way to tell her? I'm going to tell her. If it's... No, you can never just like... The friend, boyfriend's never just cheat. They always... Hurt your feelings here, then answer the phone there, location off here. So you're gonna know, and once it happens, you're gonna let you know, friend, you're dumb. You knew this boy was cheating on you, so don't come crying to me, because we, we, you see what's going on. We'll be there for you to cry your shoulder. You cry on my shoulder, but like, you know what's going on. I'm gonna tell you just like that. I'm not sugarcoat nothing, because like, what is there to sugarcoat? It's a man. Get another one. It's many out here. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, with that being said, I like Nevaeh's answer, but I do not motherfucking agree with Nevaeh this time. <laughs> I am not snitching on it, man. You got to catch that motherfucker yourself. You need to know. I don't want you to break over no motherfucker because of some shit I told you, goddamn. Oh, see, like, if it's right there in my face, like, if yeah, it's like, I know. I know. I know. The I'm definitely snitching. I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to send it. I'm not like that. Yeah. Because, like, I would hate for her to watch my friend be dumb. Because now every time I'm sitting in your face, I'm like, I'm disgusted, low key, because you see this, mm -hmm. and I hate when people ignore things that's right in their face. I hate this so much. Then when you put, then when you look at it like that, say you tell your friend something. I just caught your nigga cheating on you with my friend, and you tell your friend that, and two days later you see her and him back together, loving harder than they ever loved before. She, <laughs> if she getting cheated on again, then she just can keep getting cheated on. Cause I tried, I tried one time, I won't try again. Who, Cause who am I? I'm not gonna save your relationship. You want to get cheated on? You do that. I tried once. That's what's up, man. I had a good time with you, Nevaeh. Say, I'm happy to <laughs> be here. had a good, good time, man. Is there anything you want the world to know about Nevaeh? It's your time to shine right now. Get it all if off you your chest. See this now? No, I'm coming. I'm going to be the next up. You might not know who I am right now clicking on the YouTube, but you're going to know later on in life. Like, I'm coming. All you got to say, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes, sir. You heard it from Nevaeh. And with that being said... We're going to go into this one take. Tell my bitch I don't like her so she 
go. Should've slid with the sniper that hop on a hoe. Now my bitch not a fighter, I'm bringing my pole. When I walk in it, bitch better put up your hoe. It's expensive, my body, so I know you can't smoke. And I hammer them bitches, don't chuck when they throw. We don't be on my bitch, cause I tend to be horn. I open on Insta, her cool too strong. Click on the fence with these bitch getting freaky. Big body trip, no, she tryna come see me. Look at her body, she back on the TT. I need a bitch tryna run to them VV. I need a bitch to be happy to see you. Won't keep you no secret, let fuck the city. Won't keep you no secret, let run to them 50. I found me the baddie, be right now I'm winning. Twin bit of game, no one tree of the goat. If you fuck a little tree, you leaving the toad. I ain't keep the receipt, a little bro to your ghost. If I speak on this shit, know this shit on the flow. Nigga be geeking, they robbing the stove. I don't do beefy, don't like me, then oh. Got in the streets, so like told them pose. They call the police, then them niggas, they hold. Hop on the beat, and I'm sliding so differently. They don't like vests, so they like it, you kidding me. Is you okay? I don't like the stupidity. Bitch on my body, I think that she feeling me. Bitch on my body, she calls me a flight delay. Told the bitch, hurry, or tell the bitch underlay. Bitch, be speaking on me like a holiday. I don't get fucked by the long as I'm getting paid.